this video is actually being shot on the Fuji X-H2S, which I believe is one of the best hybrid cameras for filmmakers. We went to the streets of Nashville to put this camera through its paces, and we're here to help you decide if this is the right tool for you as a filmmaker. First, let's talk about open gate recording, which I believe is the future for all hybrid cameras. Fuji has basically unlocked the full potential of the sensor and is giving us the entire three by two aspect ratio to record ProRes video. It's free real estate. That means that you can get a really cool vibey square-ish shot, or if you're framing for 16 by nine, it gives you a little bit more wiggle room on the top and the bottom. But where this mode really gets useful is for the types of shooters that are needing vertical video and horizontal video. It gives you so much more flexibility in post when you're framing for vertical. The only other manufacturer that's doing open gate and hybrid cameras right now is Panasonic. And I would love to see this in other cameras moving forward. Even my cinema camera doesn't have a feature like this. I would love it. And by the way, we use the Metabones speed booster in this video, which essentially made our APS-C camera a full frame camera. And that leads me to my next point. The mount on this system is extremely versatile. With different adapters, you can get a speed booster like we did, but you can also adapt it for PL mount lenses so that you can use traditional Super 35 PL cinema lenses on this bad boy. In addition to the flexibility of the mount, you also get IBIS on the sensor. In-body image stabilization, and it's gotten a lot better with the X-H2S. It's a little bit more subtle and it doesn't seem as jittery and robotic as the units that I've used in the past. However, it's nowhere near as smooth and buttery as like something from Sony, but it is very handy to have as the lenses we use today were all manual focus retrofitted Zeiss optics that don't have any type of image stabilization built into the lens. That means that you could use vintage lenses and cinema lenses on this camera with IBIS, which is awesome. That leads me to my next point. I feel like this camera is wonderful for manual focus lenses, retrofitting any cinema lenses or Fuji's own cinema lenses that they make that are these beautiful, small, compact zooms. There's the 18 to 55 2A, and I think the 55 to 100 2A. Both of those lenses are in X mount and that actually communicates to the body. So the IBIS and the focal length pair up beautifully, which means you get the most stability for whatever focal length you're at. But we used Chris Haggerty's Zeiss lens set, which ranges from 18 millimeters all the way to 85 millimeter manual focus lenses. And it was a beautiful pair on this camera. The reason I say manual focus is great on this camera is because I find that the autofocus, unfortunately, isn't the best with Fuji. Granted, we didn't do any tests with this camera. So take my word with a grain of salt. I'm just basing it off of the reviews I've seen. But in my opinion, I see this camera as a wonderful cinematographer's tool using manual focus optics. Codex. This camera has so many codex, different recording modes and features. And I think it's awesome, but it can be a little overwhelming. In fact, it's nuts how many bit rates you can choose with this camera. You can actually shoot 4K at 50 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second, 300 and 750 megabits per second, which is just not necessary for most cases. However, we did use that mode for almost any time we needed to shoot in H.265 just because I wanted the best. Not to mention the fact that you can shoot ProRes at LT, standard 422, 422 HQ, and of course the ProRes RAW, which we didn't test because we don't have an Atomos recorder. And you can also shoot Blackmagic RAW if you use the Blackmagic View Assist recorder. So for somebody who's kitting this camera out, you can actually shoot 6K RAW out of this camera with that full-sized HDMI, which is wonderful. We finally have that full HDMI Type A port. This is a first for Fuji and a welcome addition. I wish other cameras would follow suit. I'm looking at you, Canon. Picture profiles. This camera has many picture profiles. If you're not familiar with Fujifilm, they have some incredible film simulations that you can use on this camera. Now, obviously this camera can shoot photos and I feel like the film simulation modes like Astia or Probia, Classic Chrome, they look beautiful for video, but for someone like us who are wanting to do a lot of grading and post-production, using those film simulations baked into your footage is not gonna be ideal because you won't have as much wiggle room in post-production. But as a filmmaker, I feel like the most exciting thing in terms of picture profiles on this camera is the new F-Log 2. But dynamic range! It gives us better dynamic range and better color science than original Flog. F-Log 2 has gotten more advanced and both Chris and I were very pleased with what we were seeing just off of the back of the screen. I mean, this looks so good. Fuji has the ability to view a LUT on your display as you're filming. And when we were looking at that LUT, it was so amazing how vibey the image is. 
This camera has two native ISO levels. So if you want the best image quality possible in F-Log 2, you're gonna wanna shoot at 1250 ISO or 3200 ISO, which is pretty high. So when you're outside and you're running around, definitely need to carry around some ND filters to help you. And that's one of the things that I don't like about this camera. There's no built-in NDs, but can't have everything. But if you're trying to match with other cameras that don't have F-Log 2, F-Log 1's native ISO is 640 and 1600 for that. So the base ISO is a little bit lower, but F-Log 2 looks better. So just shoot F-Log 2. Okay. There's a couple of noise reduction modes in this camera, and I recommend turning them all off because of Gerald Undone's video. Gerald went into great detail on this and he did some tests, and I would highly recommend everybody go watch that video if you haven't already, if you're interested in this camera. The built-in processing creates kind of a smearing and almost like a ghosting effect in certain modes and it doesn't look good but if you just clean it up a little bit in post it looks really really good. DaVinci Resolve has great noise reduction so you're looking at an A and B test here and you can see how much sharpness is retained and how much just overall cleanliness we have. That does lead me to the low light performance on this camera. Again we were using the speed booster which gives us an extra stop of a light in terms of performance take that as it is but the ISO performance isn't the best in the whole wide world. It's definitely up there with any other cinema camera that you would use, especially like a RED or like a C70, but by no means is it an A7S. This camera is no better than what you've seen from other Fuji cameras. According to some of the reviews I've seen, we don't have anything to test side by side, but I wasn't blown away with the low light performance. But if you stay in the right range at your native ISO levels, you don't underexpose too much. And again, turn all the noise reduction features off and clean it up in post if you need it. I think this camera is more than enough for most filmmakers in terms of noise production. And honestly, we've all gotten pretty spoiled with this because back in the old days, when you were shooting on actual film, people got away with much more grain in the image and it was perfectly acceptable. Autofocus on this camera is decent. It's a contrast and phase detect hybrid system. Fuji doesn't have the issues that Panasonic has, but by no means are they up to par with Sony and Canon in terms of their continuous autofocus performance and just the different modes and the tracking modes. But with autofocus lenses, you can definitely track a face. If I were sitting here with an autofocus lens, fairly certain it would have no problem, wouldn't wobble around. It does seem to have some issues with kind of breathing back and forth. I saw a video by Gordon Lang and he did some tests with the autofocus on that. It seems a little weird, but overall it does a decent job. You, you shouldn't really buy this camera for the autofocus, but it's nice that it's there and it's nice that it does work. And Fuji has a past of making things better through firmware. So hopefully over the next couple of years, they will advance the autofocus performance on this camera with future firmware updates. Now this camera doesn't have an anamorphic mode built in, but that three by two open gate recording mode does give us a semi-square kind of frame, but this camera unfortunately does not have a true four by three anamorphic mode. In terms of slow motion on this camera, you can shoot up to 240 frames per second in 1080p in 10 bit, but you do lose the audio when you go to that mode. And if you wanna stay at 4K, the maximum frame rate for 4K is 120 frames per second. I personally don't shoot very much slow motion, but I found the 4K 60 to look really good on this camera. And I think that's probably the best sweet spot in terms of image quality and slow motion ability, but this can do 4K 120 and it does look pretty nice. Now it is odd that this camera has two different card slots, but it sort of makes sense because there's different recording modes. I kind of wish they just picked two of the same to be honest, but I guess because this is a hybrid camera, there's a lot of photography shooters who may only have SD cards and they don't want to pick up a CFast card. This camera has the beloved flip screen, which I really like. It also gets out of the way of the mic jack, which is wonderful. That's one of the issues with flip screens in the past. So it's well designed. You can also plug in the camera over USB-C, which is actually what we're doing right now. I have it plugged in on the tripod and it's giving the camera power as I'm talking. Also, if you get into the high ProRes modes or the ProRes RAW recording modes, your camera may overheat. Thankfully, Fuji actually sells a separate accessory that you can use to screw onto the back of the camera. I love this as a solution. Body is well designed. It fits in the hand fairly well. Though, to be honest, it's kind of a weird hybrid of the Fuji aesthetics with just like normal camera stuff. So it just kind of looks like a Frankenstein camera because it's blending these two design languages together. And by that, I mean, it's got the traditional dials that you would see on most modern cameras, but then kind of the blocky retrofied Fujifilm logo on the EVF and just the sharp corners. Cool, but 
it's definitely not Fuji's prettiest camera. Let's just say that. So Chris, this is your first time using a Fuji just in general. Yeah. What were your kind of overall impressions after a whole day of shooting? I was really surprised. I was not expecting to like it nearly as much as I was. I mean, even when we were talking about this episode, it's kind of like, I don't know, Fuji's like, we do a lot of Canon, Sony's really cool. Do we really want to do Fuji? But as soon as you handed the camera to me, I was just like, Whoa, I was shocked. It looks yeah. so good. And, you know, I kind of mentioned when we were out there that it, it reminded me of the first time I picked up a, like a cinema camera. What I mean is just the excitement of like, whoa, you, I'm getting this out of this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> colors were so stunning. I, I shoot a lot of film and it reminded me of kind of contrast curves and colors that you get from stock, film stock. Fuji themselves make great custom LUTs for each camera. So they actually have an X-H2S F-Log2 LUT. Um, and there's a couple of different options. This is the Eterna LUT on top of mm. that, which is super vibey and cool. I don't know what this one is. Oh, that's the bleach bypass. I was just gonna say that looks like, yeah, BB. Yeah. This one is just a standard 709. That doesn't look good. <laughs> YDR, which is, I guess, just kind of like a standard thing without too much mojo on it, but I mean, it still looks really nice. I personally really like the standard Eterna or the bleach bypass one. And again, these are just supposed to be starting points for yeah. you um, to then grade on top of. It's pretty cool that like uh, a camera manufacturer has such vibey LUTs. <laughs> right, and that's, that's what I mean. That's what's so exciting is I feel like it's, it's so, um, which I understand everyone's like trying to achieve the perfect skin tones and stuff. Stuff, but sometimes like not having these perfect skin tones is like attractive. It looks mm -hmm. like the old film, you know, film stocks and stuff. And it's so cool. And so you can see quite a bit of green in the yeah. image here, but that's because I did turn off the noise reduction in camera. I mean, look at the, the green and the shadows here. I don't, I don't mind it at all. Look like at this shot, we, we do have, we were cheating a bit. We were using the black pro mist filter to give us some glow and some beautiful mm -hmm. aesthetics. But this is the way people shoot on this camera. A right. lot of people are gonna use that filter on yeah. this camera. I mean, I, I feel like you wouldn't even have to clean up that much noise. Oh, look at that, That's, I love this. You know what's cool too is like the, the open gate recording, I think it was ideally for people to crop and post, but I really like the aspect ratio. Me too. It's cool. I mean, me and Julian were saying on set, like, should we shoot a short film on this? What are some of your takeaways even just with simply just a simple LUT and looking at this with no color grade? This is just straight out of the camera with a LUT. I mean, I, again, it's like, I, what, what I love is the colors, the, the color rendering of this. It, it feels so fit, filmic and, you know, like we were just saying that the, the, even the grain, even though that, yeah, that you can see quite a bit of grain here, I'm not distracted by it. Even if you just removed some of the, the grain and just the highlights and let it bleed, the, the noise bleed into some of the midtones and shadows, I think it looks really kind of pleasing. It, it feels because, like a film stock. Because this grain, Looks so pleasing, you may not even need to add grain and post. Yeah. Just... Digital noise isn't always the worst. Ooh, this looks cool. Yeah. The blue uh, contrast with the tungsten. Yeah, again, I feel like this could have been something out of a short film. I mean, so, all and then of it. This shot, I love <laughs> the red Walgreens sign yeah. in this little spot in uh, downtown Nashville and this square aspect ratio. Yep. The, you know, your lenses are doing a wonderful job here. Just everything is coming together with these shots. And again, this is with zero color grade. This is just straight out with a LUT on it that is shipped by the manufacturer. I'm so Look pleased with this. I, mean, I don't think I would even change that very much. Th that's what I mean. I think to me, it's like maybe a little bit of noise reduction. It, it looks like an expensive camera that has a really nice color grade mm -hmm. done to it. Like yeah. that's insane to me. Yeah. I, I, I really had a ton of fun and, and it kind of opened my eyes to Fuji. And I, I, I definitely want to be playing with their cameras more. I'm, Really excited to, to see what else they have because yeah. this was just such a fun experience. And highly recommend this camera if this is your vibe. Again, like I said earlier, the autofocus isn't the best. We didn't do any tests with autofocus. This type of shooting is probably what a lot of you guys shoot. Manual focus, maybe even PL glass, old vintage lenses yeah. pair beautifully on this camera. I would honestly say if you're a cinematographer, maybe don't even consider getting the Fuji lenses. Get this camera as a body only and adapt lenses. I think that's 
really where the strengths lie with this because the optics are helping a lot with this yeah, type of image absolutely. Uh, that we're getting right now. And we would love to do more tests. So let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on the X-H2S and what type of tests and demos you would want to maybe see in the future. Hopefully we'll do the anamorphic lens next. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Make sure to subscribe to Soundstripe. I'm Dave Mays. And I'm Chris Haggerty. We'll see you next time. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, about subscribing! Uh, hey Cortana, order Fujifilm for dummies. Ship to Chris Haggerty, courtesy of Julian. <laughs>